Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 108 of the Random Thoughts podcast. How are you going, Darren? I'm good. How are you? How's your holiday? Holidays are really good. Um, yeah, it was, it was really nice. Because this, this is your first one in how long? Oh, a long time. Too long. First I, big one. I've Yeah, it was, it was 12 days. So it was the longest holiday since my honeymoon. Wow. Which was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was really, really nice. And uh, leaving the phone back here with you, leaving the computer mm. here was really good. I think that's a... Um, something about that uh, unplugging from technology yeah. and from emails and from notifications and for a while. Like, I just couldn't do work if I wanted to. Yeah. Like, I just had to. Yeah, being forced. Off. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, I'd like to have more discipline. But if you if you have me with a phone, I will check how the business is doing in some way, shape, or form. But I just had no way of checking, uh, and so I could just go, oh, "Everything's fine." I'll just uh, I'll switch off completely. So it was place really could good. have burnt down. You wouldn't own for a week. Yeah, well, and, and I figured like if the place did burn down, you wouldn't have called me anyway because you'd have gone. What's the point? Yes, it's like, <laughs> that, his holiday? like that Thomas and Edison concept. It's like well, there's nothing we can do now. Yeah, it's already yeah, burnt. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's really good. Yeah. So um, you're back last week, was it? Yep. Back last week. Uh, this week has been flat out, catching up yep. on everything. Uh, luckily, I was lucky enough to get Tuesday nights off coaching. Yep. And I was uh, thankful to Amanda, my girlfriend, who got me an invite to the Upwell Health Clinic in Campbell. They hosted a pain night or a pain event mm-hmm. where they had a uh, leading sports doctor in Melbourne, Dr. Timothy Wood, yep. who was brilliant. And he spoke for... Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Key situation solved. <laughs> yeah. So I was saying, yeah, so I was at the Upwell uh, Health Clinic on Tuesday at a pain summit. And Dr. Timothy Wood, Dr. Tim Wood was presenting and spoke for about an, a full hour and right. just really broke down pain yeah. and the concept of what it is, where it comes from, how it works, why we need to pay attention to it, but also at the same time educate, in their case, patients. It was more of a sort of a clinical base. But so it, it was pitched to patients mostly? Pitch, it was pitched to clinicians and how they help their patients, their patients. Deal, okay. with their, yep. deal with their pain and deal yep. with their problems. And yep. so I was thinking we have less patients and more athletes and members here at Core Advantage, but the same rules kind of apply. We have yep. kids have little niggle, niggles, major injuries. We help people with the rehab as well. Hmm. I thought uh, diving in on the pain stuff and actually explaining what it is, what it means, why you want to pay attention to it, but also not pay some attention in some cases to it, can be really valuable. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we, we are, there's there's rarely a week that goes by that not having some conversation with, with someone because any anytime you're training a large amount of athletes, there's going to be injuries, there's going to be issues, mm. um, and just humans in general. Like, you know, pain is you know a component of our life. It tells us when things aren't working. Um, I think... What's been interesting for me watching so the pain science stuff is fascinating. We'll link to some other stuff as well. Yep. Uh, I think the Laura Mosley some TED smarter talk. people doing better talks on this stuff <laughs> yeah. than us. Yeah. Um, and I, when I first got my head around what you were going to talk about, my mind was was absolutely blown. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to preface it though with um, I think the pendulum has gone from mm. a very mechanistic view that pain is exclusively created in the body parts yep. and torn hamstring it's the hamstring's fault yep. Yep. Uh, to this thing where now it's like our oh, pain's all in the brain and then people have you know in typical fashion taken it too far as, as though you can never have actual the actual back pain is like the tooth fairy or something yeah <laughs> it's <laughs> the same it's, with everything it always goes from it's all mechanistic it's, to it's all neural it's probably some combination yeah mechan- and that's mechaneuralistic <laughs> There's the word. Uh, and that's what Tim, uh, Dr. Tim was Did talking he? about last yeah, night. He was saying, like, yeah, like, and we'll, we'll dive deep in, and we'll go. Well, from sorry, I'll, I'll start tracking. You go back, go, go back into, yeah, lay it out. In terms of Where should we start? All right. Um, let's start with the lay person's impression of how, uh, the common sense impression of how pain is created. And I think that's the best point. And that's just the idea that uh, if you have some sort of an injury or something happens, uh, to a part of your body that it's like um, the signal is just transmitted to your brain and that signal is 100% objectively, that's just... Uh, Unadulterated, pure pain. <laughs> yeah, like if you have a 3 out of 10 incident, it will be reported as a 3 out of 10, just like on a computer, the way some sort of a malfunction will be reported. Like it's a really mechanistic Thing. Like an engine in a car, like if it overheats by 10 degrees, it will tell you it's overheated by 10 degrees. It reports yeah. exactly what's happening yeah. at the engine. Yeah. Um, and and so uh, what that means is that people then take their pain as gospel truth. It's this amount of pain is, this pain is 
directly representative of the level of damage to my tissues. Yeah, or, or severity of the acute injury, chronic injury, whatever it might be. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas the, the new paradigm and the accurate paradigm is actually, it's created um, based on past experiences, it's cr the level of severity of the thing, so yeah. many other bits and pieces. Yeah. So I think um, you first got to let go of that idea that it is just uh, a direct one-way channel of reporting and that it's uh, kind of scientifically objective. Mm. Um, and then you've got to start thinking about, okay, uh, how is the pain, how is the pain picture actually built by your brain, I suppose. So should we go there? Yeah, let's go there. Let's go there. Okay, so uh, let's use a stubbed toe yep. as an example. You stub your toe on the coffee table. Yep. What happens is your nociceptors, so the receptors that sense, and um, the presentation on Tuesday talked about them being danger sensors. So they sense pressure, temperature, uh, yep. stretch, all these things mostly in your skin. And they sense uh, effectively what is the sim stimulus that turns into pain later on yep. down the track. So it starts, you stub your toe, the nociceptors feel that blunt trauma yep. and they shoot up via your nerves to your spinal cord. Yep. At your spinal cord, you have what's called a dorsal root ganglion. Yep. I think. <laughs> I'm not the doctor here. I'm, this is secondhand from the doctor, but it's, I think it's got a dorsal root ganglion. And at that point, that's kind of like a junction where the, the signal from the nociceptor meets the spinal cord mm. and either a downward inhibition effect from your brain will sort of balance it out yep. or an upward sort of excitatory sense from yep. the brain will, will interact at this stage at the dorsal root ganglion. So uh, when I was running this morning, I got relatively minimal shoes and I stood on a little stone. Yep. Uh, so stabbed and, into your foot. Yeah, and it's the amazing thing where you feel your body deload it. So like you start to stand on the, if if you're dopey, you stand on it, you stand on it good and it hurts. Yeah. But if you're kind of alert if or light on your feet. If yep. you're light on your feet and you're sharp, your body deloads itself before it injures it. Like so I stood on the stone, my body sensed it and it didn't get it clearly it was so rapid, it didn't get to my brain. Mm. It was just it like got to so this the is dorsal. so this is the the dorsal root ganglion. So this yeah. is this is the effect where you put your hand on something not knowing it's hot, and all of a sudden it is hot. And by the time you realise it's hot and that hurt, your hand's already at your shoulder. Yeah. So you, you go to pick up a, a pan and a yeah. thing, and you go and you grab it, and then you your hand flinches. You can't tell this. This isn't happening consciously, but you grab it. Your hand releases. It flies everywhere. Yeah. Your hands up next to your head, and you go, "Oh, that really hurt." Yeah. And it, but at that stage, then you realise the pain because yeah. the pain happens after that dorsal root ganglion. So it reaches the spinal cord, yep. the stubbed toe, the, the stood on the rock, the pan, yep. whatever it might be, sensation. At this point, our brain does a lot of funky stuff, a lot of, gro as Laura Mimosa calls it, groovy stuff at this <laughs> stage, and sort of assesses what's happened. And yep. it goes, okay, have I been here before? Is this a crocodile? Should I be alert? Is this a threat? Is this a real threat? A big threat, uh, fundamentally a threat assessment, isn't it? Is this yeah. pain representative of threat to me, the organism. Should I freak out the organism right here or should I just go about my business? Yeah. Now, uh, you'll hear lots of stories about um, adrenalized athletes playing with torn ACLs and playing with rolled mm. ankles and, and heroic things like that. And that's because their brain and the context of the grand final or the context of the life and death experience allow them to continue on. Well, I mean, and, and probably the, um, the better example is people who have been shot in battle yeah yeah that's a great example um, yeah. who and and at the, the body makes the assessment if i stop i will get shot more and i'll die i'm not going to bother this person with the fact that they've got Don't a worry, couple man. of bullets in them yeah and it just they just carry on until afterwards yeah and so that is mm. that is not that the bullet hit a non-painful part of the body yeah it had you had that happened in the street that would be painful as well but the context and the situation of a battlefront or a war zone or whatever it might be mm. has changed the way your body and your brain at a subconscious level interprets that pain. Yeah. So it takes the current context, your situation, your emotions, your moods, everything like that, and will then manipulate and change that pain. So one person Anyone, stubbed- Have you seen Predator? The original? Yeah. yeah just the other night, actually. Really? It's okay. Great. So um, there's a line in that a guy, one of the tough guys gets shot. One of Arnie's mates? Yeah. yeah. And he gets shot. And someone's like, you're bleeding. And he's like, ain't got time to bleed. <laughs> <laughs> ain't got time for pain. That's exactly it. <laughs> and so that's the concept is that yeah. your brain, you can, you can control this consciously, but also mm. subconsciously our brain will control these things. So if you stub that toe and you're in the middle of a Netflix binge session and you're you know, a little bored and a little tired, whatever, that's going to hurt like all hell. Yeah. Um, but if you do that uh, walking back from halftime of an AFL grand final, 
you ain't going to notice that. Yeah. You are going to be fired up, ready to get out there, ready mm. to go coach. Or mm. if you're in a war zone, like that, those mm. things. So pain is contextual. Yeah. And so it's based on uh, smell, sense, touch, environment, temperature. All these things will affect how much we, mm. how much heat and how much credit we give to a pain mm. sense. And our, our brain effectively, in this sense, pain is all in your head because your pain, your, your pain sensation is an output yeah. of your brain in, in response to a stimulus. It's been manufactured by the brain. And it doesn't mean that it's fake. Mm, that, that's the big thing that it sort of went that way. It's like, everyone's like, well, all pain's fake. We can control it through education and meditation and psychological intervention. Mm. But if you've ripped your hamstring apart or if you've been shot in the leg, it's not. it it's doesn't not. mean that's not still a physical injury. Yeah. yeah. That's still going to cause problems. Yeah. Mm. And so it's sort of this combination of the mechanistic Mecha mechanism that caused, caused the injury plus the neural interpretation and the contextual mm. interpretation of that sensation and combined then that determines how to respond to it. And I think the, the, the biggest takeaway for me when I started reading about this and uh, after I listened to Laura Mosley's TED talk. Which um, we'll link, it's so yep, good. It's so good. The biggest takeaway for me was, and, and a few different um, physio podcasts because it, it was just too fascinating mm. to, to leave alone, um, was that you need to really be careful around your language mm. um, around uh, athletes about their pain because you can you can un unwittingly f if you you can feed into the problem and you can unwittingly make that athlete magnify their pain. So instead of helping someone be better, just your words you can make them catastrophize it and, and make it worse. Like when we talk about uh, disc injuries in lower backs, we mm. talk about a slipped disc. It's literally slipped oh, out of your spine. A blown disc. Yeah. yeah. And so these words can make people think, oh, it's irreparable. It's yeah. forever. This is a lifetime You're thing. stuck with it, yeah. And in actual fact, surgery or no surgery, most back injury injuries, about six weeks, they settle back down and you can continue with normal life. Most yeah. times, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's really, the, we need to do the opposite of catastrophizing. And in uh, Dr. Wood's talk, he talked about uh, dims and sims. Okay. Dangers in me versus safeties in me. And so it's your, your interpretation of a pain or a chronic injury in this case is determined by how much danger you sense versus how much safety you sense. Okay. So us as coaches and, and parents and, and friends and teammates and like need to be focusing on the sims or the safeties. Yep. So uh, it's a small blip. It's nothing we can't handle. Don't stress. All those mm -hmm. things, we can, we can fix this all the time, things like that, as opposed to, oh, it's a slip disc. You'll never walk again and catastrophes mm. like that. Yep. Um, and... I think the problem is that people then have taken it too far often and they're mm. like, you don't have a problem at all. Like there's nothing wrong with your knee. It's all in your head. It's like, no, there's, I think very, very often what they're, what we are seeing now is people who have a small problem that because there's, and they call it being centrally sensitized where you just get basically really good at manufacturing the pain from a signal. Can so, I tell my central sensitization story? Yeah. Uh, so I used to play a lot of footy and basketball and stuff mm. when I was a kid. Never and ran, I used to run a lot. Mm. My uh, my na naivety suggested that I should run and run and run to get better at my short court sports. Uh, no, to athletes out there, it doesn't work. I just my vertical went down and down and down as I reached my twenties. Um, but I'd run all the time, like 10, 15 k, like multiple times a week, and yeah. would run pretty much every day of the week. No problems, none at all. Yeah. Uh, got to my twenties, moved to uni, started lifting weights more. Um, stopped running for a while there mm. and just sort of got busy with the other stuff and then started getting back into my basketball and started developing some really bad chin splints. Saw multiple physios and doctors and sports mm. docs and all kinds of stuff, got bone scans and all this sort of stuff. And my pain just I just was chronically, chronically sore through the shins. Mm. Would get through two training sessions, they'd blow up for the weekend. Yep. Would get through three or four, we'd blow up again. I was in and out of the team all year. It was just rubbish. Um, and it wasn't until I learned about this central sensitization concept that what was happening was that there wasn't actually much structural damage or tissue damage at my shins, but because it hurt so much the first few times I'd had it, mm. my brain had done a really good job going, hey, there's a tiny bit of pain here. I'm going to make that an 11 out of 10 so you don't run for three days. Yeah. And so my brain was doing a job of protecting this little bit of tibialis posterior irritation and telling my body, it's like, you've got no business running, stop it. Don't be crazy. This is going to rip your leg apart. Yeah. When in fact, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yep. And so now that I'm very aware of this and doing all the same training I was on the same body weight, nothing mm. there has changed. But now when I get that little pain, I'm like, eh, mm. probably not that big of a deal. And I haven't had the same level of pain since. Yeah. Because 
my mental state around the catastrophizing around the injury is nowhere near as bad. Yeah, it's such that's a good example. Uh, it's such an, a, a big area. Um, in your example too, I think one of the other things that happens is, is if you're picking up those pain signals and you go, ah, I shouldn't do anything. That's yeah. actually, that's where the, the true catastrophe is if you catastrophize it, you will create an actual catastrophe. And the catastrophe is you get weak really rapidly. Yeah, because this is the thing with pain is pain is a pain is an evolutionary mechanism to protect your body. Yeah. So there's no point running on a rolled ankle because you'll make it worse mm. if it is that bad. But the problem is the brain can exacerbate and will mm. change the signal. And so the classic is knees going and going downstairs. Mm. If you have a little bit of patellofemoral pain, you will suddenly develop this apprehensive response where you don't want any pain at all and you will start walking downstairs one leg at a time rather than using the sore knee. Um, but it just so happens that going downstairs is really good for maintaining uh, cord strength. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so you stop doing that and all of a sudden you've now got weaker cords and you're probably more likely to have patellofemoral pain. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it becomes this vicious cycle mm. where pain leads to avoidance behaviors, avoidance behaviors leads to weakness, weak muscles, atrophy, mm. and that atrophy leads to more pain because you don't have the muscles or the tendons or whatever yeah. is protecting the joint. And before you know it, you actually have a proper problem. You have... You have uh, rather than a minor irritation, you have a structural deficit that causes actual wear and tear and problems. Yeah. Um, what advice did Dr. Tim give about navigating that? So you, you, there's a, if you break down the safety in meeting. How do you actually do that? In how does that translate in in the real world? Yeah. So uh, education mm -hmm. was a really important. So educating. So this podcast will be our now go to resource. Go listen yep. to this podcast educating people that pain yes it's in your head but that doesn't mean it's not real doesn't mean you're crazy doesn't mean you're crazy it just means that doesn't mean you're hypochondriac because people think it means people think it means they're soft yeah. Don't they? but yeah what it actually means is it means that your pain is individual it's real it's yeah. unique to you it's unique to your situation but it doesn't mean it's forever can i talk about phantom pain yes did he talk about that at well, all? He, well, he did. He had an example of a man who'd had he, the top of his tibia crushed in a um, like a car accident with a trailer. Like the yeah. head of the trailer crushed his thing. And he had tried to have a knee replacement. Re, knee replacement. And in this man's head, he decided that he was going to have an amputation. Talked to yeah. some experts. They said, amputation's the way to go. And Dr. Tim Wood talked about it and said, well, you, the chance, like you know, seven out of 10 or something or other, people still have phantom pain in the limb even after the gun. So he still might have pain in this non-existent limb. Mm. But... Dr. Wood suggested he actually still go through it because the man was so convinced it was going to help that his conviction about its potential success yeah. would have been enough to probably get him over the line. Mm. So your belief that a cortisone injection might help or that ice is helping you, that placebo is probably as powerful, if not more can powerful, we, than whether it even does. Can we link to Seth Godin's um, placebo yes. on Kimbo? Yeah. That's, yep. that's great. Another um, podcast that Seth Godin. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, and... Just the power of, you know, our mind is incredible. Once we, once we tell our mind something, our mind is incredibly good at rearranging things to make what we've told ourselves true. Mm. And you see, it in, you see it in politics, you see it in business, you see it everywhere, and you see it uh, in, in the body as well. Um, but the phantom pain thing, I think, is if you're trying to break, if someone's really hanging on tight to that idea of the old school mechanistic view of pain, uh, just diving into phantom pain is amazing because, yeah, yeah it's like 70% of amputees still suffer significant pain that they will swear on the Bible is coming from the hand that they no longer have or the foot that they no longer have because the brain uh, just it still it just doesn't recognise. And some people have the, which sounds almost as bad or worse in some ways, um, have like this permanent itch, like, like they've had their left hand chopped off. And they've got this really bad itch in their pinky finger. But th there is no pinky to scratch. Yeah. So I know an amputee. Do you? My father is missing three fingers. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, so he's missing on, I forget which hand, right hand or left hand, missing a thumb he's... and a middle finger. And on the other hand, he's missing half a pinky, a half an index finger rather. So he's missing three halves. Tell, I think we, you can't just, you can't just, because people are now going to think that you are uh, an Anglo Yakuza. <laughs> Okay, so my dad is a professional fisherman. He yep. works on a 66-foot uh, fishing vessel. He owns it himself. He's a skipper. Um, he catches tons and tons of crayfish every year down off the west coast of Tasmania. Uh, I've spent 10 trips on the year. Mm. Great, great job. Mm. Uh, when the weather's good. When the weather's not so good, it's horrible. Um, but there's seals and dolphins and whales yeah. all around and out, can, out can, in nature. Can really. we just talk briefly about how amazingly fast dolphins are? Yeah, they're crazy. 
crazy. Um, we, we had some of them playing around. With, we were doing whale watching, and we are on a really fast catamaran at Harvey Bay. And the dolphins were, like, they were just surfing so fast. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Mm. Anyway, so go. As an aside, yeah. I'm sure they feel pain too. Um, so yeah, so he's worked on the boat and in two separate incidents, he got his fingers stuck in some machinery on the boat and it had effectively had the tops of his fingers mangled. So he had two... One, and one happened while he was 24 hours away from port. So he was in the middle of the ocean. So that one happened and he's chopped off two fingers? So middle finger and thumb. He kind of got mashed up a bit of the rest of his hand, which they say. And so what did he do? So he's like, it's ma- is he trapped in the machine? Like what actually happens? Uh, it, not a great storyteller my days. It man a few words. Um, <laughs> but he tells it that he, it sort of got in the in the belt and kind of got ripped off. What's the belt? belt? Uh, like a fan belt. Like a, like a, I don't know. Uh, this is why I'm not on the boat anymore. <laughs> uh, like a machinery belt. Like okay. A, like an engine belt type. Okay. Thing. So so got, was, he, was he working on the engine? I believe he was working on it or adjusting something while they were going and got right. stuck in there. Stupid mistake. And the second one was a similar thing, but that one happened in port. So How far was away was the first one? 24 one? hours. So he had to turn the, or 16 hours, something crazy. He had to turn the boat around, wrap his so hand up. So, so he's just wrapped it up to stop, so he doesn't bleed to death. Wrapped it up and then like above the heart and up here and then just turn the boat around and just and was he, sail back Did in. he have people on the boat as well? There would have been two decades. So, it's always, so they would have done some steering, surely. There's no steering. Until, but most boats are autopilot. <laughs> so they have GPS and, and yeah, navigation yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and so it would have been just straight back in and then straight into the hospital and they couldn't save the fingers because they were mushed. Right. Did he put them on ice? Uh, I think they were like mangled by the, the belt or the whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the gears. Yeah. So yeah. They, were, they were gone. And so what, what are, so a um, bit gruesome, but what do they actually do to make them like... Like start, so he's got two stubs. Yeah. One so they neaten up the stubs, or uh, yeah, so they neat, so they're kind of like rounded and stuff. And so uh, I believe <laughs> that sounds like that'd be great. <laughs> so uh, skin grafts is how they do it. Okay. And this is the cool thing. So I asked him about phantom pain and what happened. He said, yeah, for a little bit, it's kind of gone now because they're only small mm-hmm. amputations. But what happened was they did a skin. He kind of ripped the skin off another finger, Jeez. and so it's got a skin graft that kind of looks a little bit different. Kind of looks like yeah. uh, like sort of pink as opposed to like uh, Caucasian yeah, type right. skin. Uh, but I was like, when I was a kid, I was like, what's going on with this bit? And he said, well, that's a skin graft they took from there and put to there. Yeah. I said, so what happened? And he said, well, when you squeeze that, I can feel it over there. That's so, so it's weird. on his ring finger. I think it's on his ring finger. When you squeeze that, the top of that ring finger, he feels it in, in the in other, where the skin graft came from because they've taken nerve yeah. tissue as well. So I'm not sure whether that's physiologically because the nerves have been moved yeah. or whether it's the phantom pain type effect, so the referral type effect. Yeah. So yeah, and so the other hand's a little clean. That's just one finger, but this one's a bit mushed up and stuff. The other one, the second time, Mm -hmm. which wasn't, you would think you'd be once bitten, twice shy. What happened to that the second time? I remember. I was at home. He's a very smart, methodical man. He's also a stubborn man though, and a very hard worker. So he'll work uh, till all hours on his own at nights, like to late. Uh, Yeah, and and he won't. Someone who does it once, and like I've got it. I've got your dad, Pig Deza. He has made. Uh, mistakes as we all do in life but he like never makes a mistake twice well this is the, this is the thing like, <laughs> this is the one he did make before. and so i remember i was at home uh must have been did your like, mom crack it i must have been like year eight or nine so 14 15 16 years old and mum gets a phone call and this is early days of mobile phones i'm, I'm a little older and um he's going oh you've done it again haven't you god damn it <laughs> Not less jacob days. look after the boys oh she went to help dad and he came home and he was all stitched up and he was he was a little bit of a sheepish. <laughs> a little sheepish, exactly. I can't imagine a dead sheepish either. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that was just a little one. That was just the top mm. knuckle. Right, right. Um, but so now we asked Dad, how do you count to seven? And he holds up his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Used to be eight, but now it's seven. <laughs> He's losing it. I mean, he'll, he'll always come home with bangs and bruises and stuff like yeah. that. Like tinkering away and welding things and putting right. things together. So interesting. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, Back to the, the back, pain back to pain. normal pain that people who yeah. have all their limbs experience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think the the biggest takeaway for me is actually can we before we go takeaways yeah. one thing they talked about uh, mm. at the talk was the idea that acute pain is normal and yep. that's something you should respond to and, and yep. uh, respond appropriately. But when pain becomes chronic, that's when you uh, enter. A, a, and some people don't know what acute and chronic is. So just just mm. quickly. So acute is something. Uh, if I punch sh- arm right now, wow, that'll, wow. that'll be acute pain. Yeah. Uh, if you roll your ankle, that's an acute injury. If you have wear and tear problems in, in your knee, that's more chronic. So chronic tends to be more overuse and over time, and acute tends to be a very... Sh- so acute is a short period of time, and chronic, chronos, meaning time, time 
um, is, is long. Also, a chronic injury can be, say, you have an initial acute back injury, you yes. sprain a muscle or and strain it something. Becomes or, chronic. Uh, and through guarding and central sensitization, yeah. it becomes a chronic problem, even though there's no structural damage yeah. or the t- damage, the tissues have healed and yeah. scarred up and things like that. You still have the pain due to your context around it and your fear and things like that. So that can also be chronic okay, pain. Yeah. So what they talked about was acute pain oh, is... Sorry, just quickly. Uh, and chronic, people in this association always means a bad thing. Mm. And it just means over more time. So it doesn't, you can have a chronic opportunity. <laughs> it's a, like a long-term opportunity. Anyway, go on, sorry. Yeah. And so uh, chronic, uh, an acute uh, pain sensation is an adaptive response. That's your yeah. body guarding a thing because of an injury. Mm. Well, yeah. Unless there's like phantom pain is a bit of an exception. But in most cases, you roll your ankle, that acute pain is your body adapting to the, the change. Yeah. And so it's protecting you. Yeah. So don't put weight on that, let it heal. Mm. If that ankle pain becomes chronic, even though the tissues have healed, that becomes maladaptive. Yeah, okay. So from a yeah. neural plasticity point of view, we're mm. going to run a film soon to everyone. We're yeah. going to, we'll keep going. Yeah. Um, from a neural plasticity point of view and from a uh, nerve endings and from a signal mm. point of view, that's a maladaptive response. And your body has now that created, wrong. it's like learned this pain sense and like kind of grooved that pattern. So just like you learn to play guitar, to play golf, to learn any skill, your body can learn the skill of sensing pain, even yeah. in the absence of an actual structural problem. Yeah. Which is the bit that, whoa, mm. freaks everyone out. Mm. So interesting. Mm. Um, takeaways? Takeaways. Uh, pain is real. Pain is individual. Pain does not in no way with no injury correlate to the severity of your injury. Yeah. They're like uh, Another acronym they used was VOMIT. Victim of medical imaging uh, technology. <laughs> Victim of medical imaging technology. Uh, they've done numerous studies on bulge discs, on knee degeneration, on tendon yeah. wear and tear. There is zero correlation between the level of tissue damage and the feeling and the sensation mm. of your pain. Um, yeah. Like, you should still respect your pain and you still investigate why there is pain. And try and fix it. And definitely try and fix it, of course. That's Mm. Rehab professionals like ourselves can help in yeah. that area as well. Um, but you should not consider that because your pain today is a 9 out of 10, your injury has gotten to a 9 out of 10 level and you'll never walk again. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, so, that's the big thing I think that people take away. forget. And I think it's particularly appropriate with backs because back pain is such and a... Knees. Backs and knees backs are and knees too big such ones. a prevalent thing. Um, and, and so sometimes I think, you know, as simple as uh, going for a nice walk in the sun for 20 minutes and all of a sudden you feel better and you feel relaxed and you, you're, you're less anxious about your back. And all those things can, can help heaps. Um, Again, with that context that we talked about before. Context mm. is such, such a big deal with pain. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, takeaways are don't catastrophize it. Know that it, it's real. Don't, don't ignore it. But don't also think it's the absolute truth in chronic sense. Um, and do your exercise because you'll always feel better. Did he... So, this is a... I'm just going to put a question out there and see if someone can answer it. Uh, when I... I don't get sick much, but... Last year I was sick and I got I had a cold and I got my normal physio treatment and it really hurt mm. way 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 more than normal um, and I've got no idea why but I wonder if it's that you're in some sort of defensive mode and you're actually amplifying all pain signals. I can I can answer that via Doctor. Yeah, well, Doctor Timothy yeah, Wood. Cool. Yeah. So when you are sick, stressed, tired, run down, in any way below optimal or in a negative mm. state, your body will amplify all signals. Mm. So things will like fitness, ex- like do a fitness test and you perform worse because it'll be hard, easier. You'll lose yeah. strength. Yeah. Uh, you'll lose immune immune system function and things will hurt more. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was one of the big things I talked about. Like one of the easiest way to fix your pain is just to exercise regularly mm. and get more sleep. Yeah. If you're just in a better mood state and your body's in a better functioning better. system, things that used to hurt a bunch mm. will... Down regulate so uh this actually one bombshell to finish on opioids pain yep. relief medication yep. is now proven to actually make your pain worse really it was a study i'll find it i thought we were just ambivalent about them but it's actually no no it's like like uh it it grooves a pathway in the brain i've forgotten i didn't read the notes before this morning i'm sorry but i've started this thing it, it's a real thing um doctor do, the doctor was talking about pain would I've forgotten what it was opioids effectively exacerbate pain over time. So they mask wow. initial pain, but they actually compound chronic pain. Wow. And they actually make it worse. And then you need them more. And so it becomes a dependency thing. Wow. 
and you think it's helping, but it's actually helping yeah. Not. So it's it's um, what are opioids? Give some examples of those. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. <laughs> we will do it because I was like, I know what opioids are. That's really impressive, and then forgot to look it up. <laughs> this is why we're not doctors, <laughs> um, and it's why we don't deal with amputees and <laughs> serious workplace injuries. Um, we will uh, see if we can find a link that illuminates that a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> this is just like a starter podcast for the issue. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I thought that was that blew. That's, I knew that's opioids were a, they're they're a big deal, big problem. They're, they're over prescribing in general. I thought, oh yeah, that's bad to rely on drugs, but it's actually not just like neutral bad and wasting mm. your money and bad for you, like for the side effects. It's actually exacerbating and making your pain worse in the long mm. run. That's so interesting. Blew my mind. So. Uh, train carefully, train well, um, don't overblow it, and um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll link to the opioid. Oh, find out what an opioid is. <laughs> cool. All right, thanks, guys. See ya. All right, quick update. So, an opioid is morphine, uh, oxycodone, o- uh, codeine, and also heroin. They're all part of the opioid family. Now, what I was talking about before about the um, the effect that opioid has on pain is that over time constant use of opioid type drugs have an immune adverse effect where it actually you become generally build up a tolerance to opioids over time but also they create this immune response where your body let me make sure I get this right it's called hyperalgesia and what happens is they render the medications less effective for chronic pain over time because there is one second It sets up a chain of immune signals in the spinal cord that actually amplify pain over time rather than dull it. So not only are you building up a tolerance to opioids, but they also have this effect, this immune effect on the spinal cord and on the nervous system that upregulates pain signals. So it makes pain worse and you need more of the drugs at the same time. So it's a deadly combination. Hope that clears everything up. <laughs>